Previously, we saw the five steps that we need to go through in order to implement an RMI program. And we started going through these steps for a chat server and client a program. And so we had written our on our client, the remote interface started the implementation. We have also written the server interface and at least started the implementation. And then we did some of the main calls for the naming, binding, lookup, and creating a registry. In this video, I'd like to actually work on implementing our server. So we know that our server needs to have these four methods. If it doesn't have those four methods, it's going to be unhappy. So we can, since all of these return unit, it's actually pretty easy to give them some default implementations. Oh, actually this one doesn't. Well, we'll still give it a default implementation with three question marks. Okay. And now our server is actually happy. It compiles. Uh, but of course it's not ready. We need to store inside of here just a list of the different clients. And in fact, instead of a list, I'm going to go with a buffer. So clients is a buffer of remote client. That is, whoops, empty. And I'll import that. I'm just, since buffer is a complete type on its own, I'm just going to ignore my normal import of the mutable. Uh, eh, no, okay. I like my standard style. Mutable dot. Okay. So I have my clients here. Uh, and then we can start implementing some of these things. So for example, connect. If someone wants to connect to the server, we need to add them to our clients. And then we would need to let the other uh, clients know that, that a new client has connected, that there's a new list. Of course, we're going to have to do that for disconnect too. So since I'm going to have to do that twice, I'm going to go ahead and make a, another method. This one can be private because no one else is going to be calling it. And it's just going to call send update. Okay, and the send update then needs to run through each of the clients and for each one, we're going to send them a client update and pass them clients. And you'll note that right there uh, should be happy code. Let's see, Oop, I'm missing a close parentheses, there we go, okay. Now, it turns out this isn't quite ideal for, uh, for error handling because what happens if a client goes dead? Okay, if, a, if a client disappears, then this will, well, this will wind up throwing an exception. Um, one way that we can fix that is to run through all the clients first, or at least we have a good odds of, of catching this. We could run through all the clients, figure out which ones are no longer kind of with us. Um, and then get rid of all of those. And so instead of using a for each here, I'm going to use a filter, okay? And I'm gonna build up a list of the dead clients. So we can do curly brace C rocket Okay. And this is unhappy because it doesn't give back a Boolean. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this inside of a try. Okay, so it will try to do this and then it will catch. If it succeeds, I'm going to give back false because that's not a dead client. That is a working client. If it fails, however, I need to catch an exception and the type of exception is going to be remote exception. You might recall that we said that all of these methods, putting this at remote, basically does two things. It makes it so this extends remote and it makes it so that all the methods that are inside of here have the ability to throw remote exceptions. So it turns out that if a remote exception happens, and we need to import remote exception, 
If a remote exception happens, we give back, not false, this one should be true. We give back true. If the updating of the clients works, we give back false. And then we need to remove those clients. So clients minus minus equals dead clients. And that'll remove all of the dead clients from our mutable list. Okay. So then we can just call that method. We called it send update right there. The disconnect should do something similar. It should do clients minus equals client and then send update so that everyone knows that that client has gone away. Get clients, well, this one actually should be quite easy, right? Give back the clients. The, the buffer is a sequence. Now, normally returning a buffer like this could be risky because it would be mutable. But the thing about RMI is when you pass things in RMI, RMI has interesting passing semantics. Okay, so turns out you can't pass everything in, in RMI. And to understand this, remember when you pass something, it's being communicated across the network. Literally underneath the, the hood in RMI, there is an object output stream and an object input stream, and they are writing things back and forth, just like what we did with our sockets. Okay, there is this is using the same code from the socketing underneath the hood. We just don't have to deal with it here. Well, remember an object output stream can only write things that are serializable. And so it turns out that with RMI, the passing semantics, there are th basically three types of, well, yeah, there are three, t three possibilities. One, it is something that can be serialized. So ints, doubles, strings, and all the, all the uh, built-in collection types, and then anything that we make serializable. If it is of that type, it winds up being passed by value, which means that it actually makes a copy. It bundles up. So our remote client here, when we return this from get client, it's actually going to make a copy of the buffer and send that copy over to the client, which means that the buffer can't change our original one. So this is actually a safe thing to do, even though we're giving them back something that's mutable, they can't alter our copy of it. They get their own copy. They feel like altering their own copy. Well, that's, that's up to them. Um, we can't prevent them, but, but they can't mess with our copy of it. The other way that you can pass things is to pass things remotely. Now, it turns out that each of the remote clients inside of here is of a subtype of remote. And so all the things that are remote, they get passed by a remote reference. So the buffer itself gets copied, but all the contents in it don't. Instead of getting a copy of that, you get a remote reference to it. And that allows, so then when a client calls this method, it gets a collection of a whole bunch of things, but those things know about what computer, what port, what name to call stuff on, other, on the other computers so that they can actually talk directly to one another if they wish to. Okay, public message. So we got a, the client that's sending it and we got the text. And what I'd like to do here is um, I would like to send this out to the various clients. So I'm going to, well, I could potentially send it out. I, it could be I'm remembering it. Um, if I were going to send it out, I would do it this way. We might come back and reevaluate this. So I would want to build a message that is the client's name. Now remember the client itself is uh, remote. So that actually could potentially throw a remote exception. And then we're going to put a colon and then we'll put the text that they sent. And now I want to send that out to all the clients. So clients dot for each underscore dot uh, message of our client who was the sender and our text that we want to, to have appended, which will in this case be, I want to give them the full message there. Okay. Um, now, because RMI actually has a peer-to-peer, -peer, 
we will see, we'll come back and we're going to take out this, uh, this method right here just to prove that we can, to prove that the clients can do peer-to-peer -peer communication. Okay, uh, and, and it's worth pointing out that this, because it's a remote client, winds up being passed not as a copy, it is just you get a remote reference to it. And so when we pass that around to everyone else, they also get a remote reference that they can make calls on, which might actually be mutating calls on the other computers. Um, also note that this for each is, I'm not doing the filter right now, I'm not checking for things, so this could potentially throw remote exceptions. But as I said, we're actually gonna wind up taking this out uh, to prove that we can do peer-to-peer -peer communication with RMI, which is an advantage of RMI because that is something that would have been very challenging for us to do had we been doing this with socketing.